Layla, a qualified sex and relationships educator, pause, what is his qualification? I don't know. Just just say accepted as qualified. Just, just qualified. Yeah. Qualified. Not licensed. Just qualified. qualified. Anyways. <laughs> la la la, let me explain believes relationships between truly like-minded people are much more likely to be successful in the long run. In essence, there's little point uh, trying to compromise with a woke fish. Quote, for people who understand that political beliefs affect human rights, it is unlikely a healthy relationship could be sustained with someone whose values don't align with ours, she explains. A lot of recent political movements are based on moral values. These are things that you cannot agree to disagree on because they have a direct impact on the welfare of other beings, end quote. Okay, here's the thing. The others, it's not like the other side doesn't care about the welfare of other human beings, okay? Come on, let's not pretend. It's just that they think there's another way to go about doing it. And they might be wrong. But don't pretend like you're on the side of caring for the welfare of human beings and the other side isn't. Again, I'm not talking about the far righty people. I'm talking about just, you know, just right, maybe a little bit right leaning people and maybe like, or somebody is like a fan of Jordan Peterson. Okay. So I, yeah, maybe our methods are different. We think there are different ways of going about making the world a better place, but don't pretend like they don't want this. Don't pretend like they don't you're on the side of, you know, making the world a better place for human beings and they're not. They're also on that side. You just disagree on how to get there. But go on. What do you think? Uh, um, yeah, Vince, do you have any commentary on this paragraph? I mean, nothing that you guys didn't already say. This stuff is... Uh, like, a lot of recent movements are based on moral values, yes. These are things that you cannot agree to disagree on because they have a direct impact on the welfare of other human beings. Like, okay, but what's also dangerous is refusing to play devil's advocate and, and really examine yourselves. Why is this something that we cannot agree to disagree on? And let's go further than just say, oh, because people are going to get hurt. Go further than that. Think through this really, really clearly and deeply. And... Yeah, I mean, you guys pretty much said it all on this one. I have a very, very good question. I mean, uh -huh. I only ask good questions, but this is specifically of good. Course. Okay, this very, very good. good. This is very good, okay? I wonder what the authors and all the commentators on this article would feel about somebody who says, I don't date Muslims. Oh. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. Because, obviously, so look at this, right? Um, oh, you're right. That's a good <laughs> question. Because, well, right. me speculating, they would automatically go, no, that's terrible. That's um, bigoted. And it very well could be. Mm -hmm. um, y y that's Islamophobic, etc. Except right. for the fact that um, not all Muslims, but, you know, like, say, if you're a conservative Muslim, like all of the things that they would believe would be completely antithetical to the moral values that they hold. So would it or would it not be okay to refuse to date them? Yeah, I mean, let's, I mean, not just conservative Muslims, just if you think like, let's say, for example, these people, if you, if you think like, yeah, I'm a fan of Jordan Peterson, but it seems like you don't even understand what he's saying, mm -hmm. um, but your values doesn't even match with him, they still find you problematic, right? So, but a lot of, like, let's say somebody says, you know what, even moderate Muslims, they're endorsing Islam and Islam's values is something I can't understand that. Why would anybody endorse that? So I would never even consider dating somebody that endorses such a vile and disgusting ideology, right? Um, so even with the moderate ones, so let's rephrase this and say, I mean, I'm not saying that, but I'm just wondering mm -hmm. what I would definitely, I mean, I would definitely date a Muslim. Girl, yeah, I know that's I not your position. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, let's say what, if somebody says, for people who understand that political belief, so let's say, let's replace that with religious beliefs, right? Or Islamic. For people who understand that Islamic views, I'm just replacing this, affect human rights. That is true, though, right? Islamic views affect human rights. Can anybody deny yes. that that's not real, okay? For, for people who understand that Islamic views 
affect human rights, it is unlikely a healthy re it's, it is unlikely a healthy relationship could be sustained with somebody whose values uh, are Islamic, right? Whose values don't align with yours. Yeah, if I have un-Islamic views, if, I'm anti if I think Islam is vile and they think Islam is great, so then we, are we going to, is this, would this article, would this article, would this comment, would this person, Laila, would your argument apply to somebody who's a Muslim and you're not a Muslim? Would you say like, okay, I could see why you wouldn't date a Muslim, right? And mm -hmm. then she explains and then she continues. A lot of research, recent uh, political movements are based on moral values. So we could replace that with saying Islam is based on moral values, right? Islam is definitely about moral values, right? These are things that you cannot agree to disagree. Oof, right? See, so with that, Layla, would your logic apply here? So given that Islam is based on moral values and it affects human rights, would you say if somebody, if, if somebody comes and says, yep, we, I cannot agree to disagree with Muslims. I cannot accept Muslims because these are moral values. This is based on human rights. So you cannot just agree to disagree. Would, would, Leila, would you, be agree, would you be okay with that? Because they have a direct impact on the welfare of other human beings. Yep, Islam has a direct impact on the welfare of human beings. Would you think it would be logically consistent with, about this? But go on, Vince, you were saying something. And I tried to make it logically consistent in their, in their world's view. So the first thing that they might do is say, is pull out their intersectional Muslim friends and say, <laughs> no, 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 this is what most Muslims are like. Mm. The second thing that they, the second thing that they might do is say, well, they only hold those crazy views because of Western imperialism or Western intervention mm -hmm. that changed the cultural status of the world. Mm -hmm. the third thing they might do is play the cultural relativism card. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about with these different viewpoints that are incompatible with one another are happening within the same cultural framework. However, with your Muslim friends or you know, the Muslim people. That's a different culture, and you are imposing your cultural norms on that culture. So different rules apply. So I could that do that with it. Yeah, but let's let's try. Let, let's go through this one more time. What was the first one? Getting their you know their intersectional Muslim friend and pretending that that's what all Muslims are like. Okay, I could go You're get a Trump supporter. I could go find the Trump. So I could do the same thing. I could go find a Trump supporter that is a lovely human being that is very kind, is very sweet. I'd be like, look, this is a Trump supporter. So mm -hmm. okay, what was the next one? The next one would say well, they would try to make the argument that this is because of us, that the fundamental crazy people out there are because of us, of our intervention, of how we dis disrupted the cultural status quo of where they came from. They're trying yes, that... to go back to an anti-imperialist or a, a, a pre-colonialist identity. So that's why they're... Oh. It, so it, yeah, I could say Trump I could say it was the woke, the Trump the people that became like Trump supporters and stuff is because of you guys that whole that started calling everybody racist and became like too censorial with your attitudes and people had enough of it and that's why they became too re became so reactionary they went as far as becoming Trump supporters right so I could play that game as well. What was the third one? The third one was cultural relativism when we're criticizing the people here with you know why we shouldn't be why we should, our moral values should align with someone who isn't a Jordan Peterson S type. We're talking about the same culture here. We're criticizing our culture with from within. But what you're doing is criticizing other cultures and that criticism is stemming from your, your preconceived notions of how cultures should be based on your own culture. You're imposing okay. your own dominant narrative. And okay, this is easy. The narrative is created by white men. This is easy because for the third one, I could, I don't even have to make a point because you, you the Wokasani people already have said that the, these mm, problematic behavior is literally white culture, okay? Mm -hmm. So if it's white culture, then who are you to criticize their culture, right? Who are you to judge them based on you know the call <laughs> i mean yeah this is their culture you shouldn't like criticize them you're just putting your you're forcing your way of life your dog your um you know your understanding of what is good and what is bad you're forcing it on white people and given that race again i'm not saying this is what they're saying given that racism and supremacy and apparently science for some reason is white culture you do not get to decide uh, that these are wrong. This is based on white culture. This is just the right, you know, you don't get to say what's wrong. You know, this is just their culture. Okay. All of this is just their culture. So, by the way, 
Hey, wait a minute. They're technically, based on their based on their the way of their moral relativism, um, they haven't they aren't they arguing? Couldn't they argue that racism is not even bad? Because it's our culture. Because it's white culture. Yeah, cultural cultural relativism. They're saying this is white culture, and they're saying that you don't get to judge other people's culture because it's just from their perspective this is right and this is wrong. So why can't we do that with white culture? So hey, well, racism. Because they are white people though, <laughs> and they're trying to reform it within themselves. No, but you don't have to because who gets to say that this is bad? They do. No, they they shouldn't be. They should apply. Yeah, no, standards. it's not yeah. consistent. But that's yeah. probably what they would say. So long okay. as you are a part of that culture and you feel like it it deserves to change, then you are allowed to criticize it. Oh, as long as you're part of it. Yes. Oh, okay. So I'm like I'm I'm part of Islam. I, I'm I'm part, I come from Muslim backgrounds, but they don't. No, no, they don't. They have told me that I don't get to because I'm an ex-Muslim. I come from a Muslim background, and I criticize Islam, and they still tell me that I don't get to do that. Mm -hmm. yep. So, well, because it, it will never be good enough. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go. Um. So Layla says deception like this can be hugely damaging for those on the receiving end. Quote, realizing you have been deceived by a romantic partner can have devastating and long lasting effects. She says the person who was deceived may have uh, been led to question their whole reality and feel uncertain about their ability to judge people correctly. So, I mean, in this paragraph in general, I agree. Um, that is very harmful in a relationship. Um, but to me, that's usually as, as the result of great deceit, such as cheating, where you, that's the depth that it has to go to typically, typically, um, for people to feel uncertain about their ability to judge people's characters correctly. Um, I think learning more about someone's political beliefs is, I don't, I don't know. Like, is that the great deception? <laughs> like, I think it's closer. It's obviously not the same, but it's closer to being like, wow, you lied to me about liking SpongeBob and you don't. I can't trust people anymore. It's closer to that than mm. just completely losing your sense of reality and no longer being able to trust anybody because of how deceitful a human race is. Wait, that is though, that is like, you know, like, but what you said about SpongeBob does apply though. Like if somebody says they like SpongeBob and they don't, that that's will a, like, that's That's a tiny lie that, that's a, no, that's, that's a devastating. Tiny lie. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. This is the thing. People do this in relationships all the time. Yeah. Like women will pretend to be into sports to, you know, get along with their man, make him happy. P girls will, mm. you know, try to be the cool girl, you know, go along with things. To... No, but we're not. I, okay, hold on, guys. We're not saying that any of this is good. Okay, like lying. Don't lie to people. Right. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Well, like, we're not justifying right. it. There's yeah. well, there's there's levels to it, right? So I think most relationships go through a performance phase, as it's called, where you're putting on a little bit of a pretense about who you are to kind of get with that person. And then once you're more comfortable, that's when things become more authentic. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people during that time do are in try to be into things that this new person that they're interested is into to try to secure that relationship. Like um women do that all the time this is normal in dating so i think that level of like just performance to try to like get that cuff you know like i think that's normal and um it's not inherently wrong but if you continue to construct a false identity if you're not being your authentic self then that reaches the level of lying and being a deceptive person but just being like, oh, yeah, I like what you're into to try to be with that person. I think most relationships have that. Um, and I think all genders do that. Um, it's it's just part of trying to. No, but Smithy has a point. Is one thing is sometimes you're just making an effort. Sometimes you're yeah. not lying, right? Sometimes, That's what I mean. I mean, my ex tried to get into. Uh, you know, um, you, when I used to play World of Warcraft. Um, oh, gross. <laughs> you played World of Warcraft. 
That was a lifetime ago, okay? But then right. I remember I had an ex that she, like, we had, like, a full-on relationship in the world of Warcraft. Not just, like, outside. We had two relationships. Uh, you know, like, she really tried to get into it. And she was, like, she was actually became interested, right? Um, and, yeah, I know I've been, I've been dating people that were not interested into philosophy, politics, and these discussions before a relationship and they got really into it during my relationship with them um and it just sometimes it's not pretending sometimes you le- you're actually making a genuine effort to learn about the passions and interests of the person that you're with so and you you know that's that is that is not lying that's that could be honest